want your patients to achieve the best results possible. In doing so, it's important that your patient is the right patient for Xerona. Patients that are pregnant or breastfeeding, have cancer, or have a metabolic or thyroid condition such as hypothyroid should not be considered for Xerona treatment unless authorized by the patient's doctor. If treatment can occur in these patients, they should be made aware that due to their condition, they may not fully achieve their desired results. Once you have the proper candidate who is committed to following the protocol, it is imperative that you record precise measurements. Each patient needs to have their body measurements taken prior to the very first treatment, after the last or sixth treatment session, and then ideally one week after the last treatment session to ensure the body has fully eliminated all fat. Your staff must be diligent that each measurement is consistent and that the site location and tension of the measuring tape be the same each measuring session. To ensure this consistency, it's best to have the same dedicated individual take each pre and post measurement from the same patient. When taking measurements, this individual should also make sure that the tape is pulled just tight enough so that the tape isn't sagging, but at the same time, not too snug. This same method should be used for both before and after measurements. To take proper measurements, the patient should stand with their feet shoulder width apart, have them relax their muscles. Do not let them suck it in, as this is a typical reflex of most patients. By striving to have identical conditions for the pre and post measurements, you will maintain the highest degree of consistency. To ensure consistency, SBMI protocol requires that all measurements are obtained in relation to a standardized reference point. These standardized reference points are as follows. The waist should be measured across the umbilicus. Female hips should be measured at the largest circumference and it's important that you note the distance you are measuring below the umbilicus. With male flanks, you should measure at the circumference around the love handles, and you should also make notation of the distance below the umbilicus. The male mid and abdomen should be measured at the circumference midway between the nipple line and umbilicus, once again noting the distance above the umbilicus. The thighs need to be measured at the greatest circumference then note the distance from top of the kneecap. The neck should be measured across the Adam's apple. The circumference of the male chest and back should be measured level with the nipples. The circumference of the female bra line or back should be measured at the bra line and you should also note the distance above the umbilicus. The arm should be measured at the greatest circumference noting the distance above the tip of elbow with the arm straight. And the final measurement should be the circumference of the knee at the center of the kneecap. It's critical to remain diligent about capturing these measurements using the standardized reference points and charting of the exact location of each measurement on every patient. In doing so, you're doing your part in ensuring your patient achieves their optimal cosmetic results. It's also important that you take before and after photos of your